Hello everyone, in this video I would like to talk to you about miscellaneous assessment instruments. There are some important notes first. There are many different assessment instrument, instruments at your disposal, but that doesn't mean you need to use them all. You can try out different assessment instruments and use only those instruments that suit your teaching style best. And very important, now, classwork has a heavier percentage in the evaluation components of all school grades. This percentage varies depending on the grade, so you should uh, look for that in the evaluation rules. This is also important because uh, sometimes you read guidelines and they say, okay, uh, the teacher needs to use instruments to evaluate classwork. And then teachers start wondering, all right, where, where do I get those instruments? And they, they feel that they are already made, but that's not true. You have to design your own instruments to evaluate classwork. So here we'll go over some instruments and or procedures that you can consider for this purpose. All right, so types of assessment instruments. First, we have rating scales. They are used to measure to what extent certain characteristics or qualities have been achieved in a given learning outcome. They are convenient for focusing on observations, comparing students' progress, and recording information about students. Rating scales may be numerical, graphic, or descriptive. First, we have numerical rating scales. So, you will have a series of statements and a a scale composed of different numbers. You may have a combination of numbers plus words to indicate what they mean. As I have said previously, in this case we have a scale with five numbers, an odd numbered scale. So three is the middle. So this may not be that desirable in a rating scale because you may find yourself marking three a little too often and this doesn't show you a clear distinction between the the high achieving end and the low achieving end. So instead you might consider using four. We have a graphic rating scale, so in this case we only use words. In this case uh, a graphic scale is uh, mainly intended for formative assessment. We have a descriptive rating scale, so we have a word in addition to a, a statement that describes what should uh, what should be understood by each of the, the keywords. In this case, this would be also for formative assessment. Here you can see a sample rating scale. So we have a series of statements and a scale that, that combines both numbers and words. So you just mark the options that apply. In this case, this is a self-assessment instrument, but it could also be, you could also use the same format for an observation rating scale for classwork. Uh, here's another alternative. You could have a pictographic scale, and again, mainly for formative assessment. And since it relies on pictures, then you need to Make sure uh, both you and your students know what the pictograms mean. So in this case, we're just using uh, a battery level indicator as our scale and this two pictograms. So for example, this, you could agree, okay, by this, we mean participation, individual participation, and this interaction or group participation. And you just mark the scale in according to your own criteria and of course on top you would include uh, the student's uh, name so this could uh, a scale like, like this could be used in many different teaching settings even kindergarten so your students wouldn't need to be able to read in, in order to understand an instrument like this once more this would be for formative assessment okay I would like to draw your attention towards the distinction between rating scales and rubrics because sometimes these two terms are used interchangeably or students design an instrument and say okay this is a rubric and say uh, no actually you design you design a rating scale 
So on the left, we have rating scale. So you have criteria and scale in just spaces for the teacher or student students to mark. Uh, whereas a rubric has criteria in each of its boxes. So you see, or basically a rubric has more text than rating scale. But you see, we have the attributes, scale, and criteria. Here we have statements and a scale. So that's the main difference between a rating scale and a rubric. We may also consider using logs. So logs are observation tools that can be used to gather information about students' performance in class. Individual student cards are used to write comments about their work. Sometimes a space for recommendations is added. Observations should be focused on specific predetermined aspects and include accounts of positive and negative events. So for example, you could have a set of cards or just a, a chart in a portfolio, for example, and focused on a, a few students at a time and just make some observational comments, like the ones you can see here. You have students and recommendations. You could also use weekly reports. They are meant to be brief reports about what students are learning and what challenges they're facing while doing it. The teacher can copy some questions on the board, such as what did I learn this week or what am I still having trouble with? The students answer the questions individually and anonymously. Of course, you could do this on the board or with uh, small pieces of paper or you could consider working with tools like uh, Kahoot, for example, or Socrative, or tools like or Google Forms, and, and collect uh, input from your students in an anonymous way. See, the teacher collects their answers to analyze them and make future decisions. Remember that the point of collecting information is to use it meaningfully in order to make decisions and bring about change, positive change. You could consider using questionnaires and interviews. Sometimes it may be a good idea to survey students, parents, and other teachers to gather information about their expectations and previous experiences. This could be ma mainly for diagnostic assessment at the beginning of a course. Questionnaires can include open-ended and closed questions, while interviews can be structured, unstructured, or semi-structured. You could have a teacher's diary. Keeping a diary is an introspective way of assessing one's professional practice. You can record information about what went as expected in your class, what went wrong, what had to be modified, and what could have been different. If you keep a written account of what happened in your class, the next time you teach the same level of topic, you will be better prepared for it. Uh, of course, uh, Another way to go about this is to write the marginal notes in your lesson plans and, and, and you keep them in a portfolio. Now, portfolios. Portfolios can be used by both teachers and students to collect samples of their work. A teacher can have a portfolio with all his her lesson plans and materials and write comments and corrections on them that may prove very useful in the future. Students can have portfolios or even e-portfolios to, to see their progress over a specific period of time, which can also be used by the teacher as an alternative assessment tool. You have checklists. Checklists can be used in assessment, peer assessment, and self-assessment. Checklists can offer more descriptive information than numbers. Checklists indicate the presence or are absence of pre-established observable characteristics or behaviors. Checklists include statements describing these characteristics or behaviors. Here's an example. This would be a self-assessment checklist for a paragraph writing assignment. So just we have a series of statements, just um, the student just marks yes or no and adds comments. Also the teacher could use 
the same instrument for formative assessment. Now, let's go over some tips for conducting observations. Remember that um, the procedure in which you will gather information about students' classwork will be mainly by means of observations. So, select the aspects you would like to observe. You cannot observe everything at once. You need to be selective. Decide what you want to observe exactly about the aspects you choose. Choose the instrument that best serves your purposes. A rating scale, a log, a checklist, etc. You design your instrument. If possible, discuss this instrument with a colleague to get feedback about it. Then you apply your instrument and analyze the effectiveness of using your instrument. If there's anything that needs to be corrected next time you use it, then do it. And here are some references that you can take into account.